A well-made ship can take you anywhere in the world, but it might never leave again. Not every ship that heads out to sea makes it home, and not every vessel that reaches the end of its useful life is scrapped and recycled. Some sink, others get stuck, and more still are simply abandoned. There are some amazing abandoned ships to be found all over the world, and we're going to show you some of the best of them now. If you were to make a list of all the materials you might build a ship out of, concrete probably wouldn't be very close to the top. Nevertheless, the idea of concrete ships was briefly popular because of a shortage of materials and resources during and after the Second World War. Every nation involved in the war investigated the possibility, and you'll find the remains of the American attempt at Cape Charles in Virginia. The wrecks are known as Kiptopeak's Concrete Fleet. There are nine vessels here in total, and all of them had already been written off by the Navy as obsolete or unfit for purpose when they were dragged here in 1948. Upon arrival, the bilge cocks of the ships were opened so they'd slowly sink to the bottom of the bay, thus becoming a barrier around the Chesapeake Bay Ferry Terminal. They're barely any use as a barrier anymore. The holes in some of them are so big that you could sail a small ship straight through them. Tourists like to get up close with them for photographs, but the local government warns against it on the grounds that any of the concrete ships could collapse at any moment. Next up, it's the SS Mahino. She was a hospital ship during the First World War, but today she's stuck on the coast of Fraser Island in Australia. She's badly rusted and full of holes, but somehow the bulk of her hull is still in one piece. Life as a hospital ship isn't exactly what the designers of the Mahino had in mind when she was built. She was supposed to be a luxury ocean liner, ferrying wealthy customers on sightseeing trips across the Tasman Sea. When the First World War broke out, though, the 5,000-ton vessel was called into active service. She even made it as far as the UK, carrying wounded soldiers from France back to England. After the war, she went back to Australia and returned to her original line of work, before she was bought by an Osaka-based shipbreaker in July 1935. However, she never made it to Japan. While being towed there, she was struck by a cyclone which tore her tow line and set her adrift. It was sheer luck that she and the eight people aboard her ended up beached on Fraser Island rather than becoming lost at sea. Today, the wreck is extremely fragile, and so is off-limits to visitors. There isn't a person living in Staten Island, New York who doesn't know where the Staten Island boat graveyard is. And almost all of those who do know it think that it's an eyesore that the government should do something about. There are at least 30 abandoned tugboats rotting away on the Arthur Kill waterway, and they've been there for years. They're the forgotten remnants of a fleet that was brought here to be broken up by the Witty Marine Equipment Company. There were 200 of them at first, but the Witty Marine Equipment Company ceased to exist before finishing the job and nobody took over its work. Anything inside the ships that might have been valuable was removed years ago. By this point, even any scrap of potentially valuable or recyclable material has been torn away. The boats are little more than floating husks, and describing some of them as floating is generous. They've been left like this since 1990. The local authorities probably hope that the ships will eventually rot away altogether and solve the problem for them, and given time, it's likely that they will. If you know where to look for it in Moscow Oblast, Russia, you can find a vessel that looks like it's the result of a forbidden union between a plane, a boat, and a sleigh. The red stars on its orange keels mark it out as Russian and possibly old, but they contrast with the white cabin and seem totally at odds with the enormous aircraft engine and propellers behind them. You'd need to know a thing or two about the experimental aircraft designs of the 1960s to recognize it, but it's the last surviving model of the amphibious Aeroslay A3PS, conceived, designed, and built by Tupolev Vasilevich Makotikin. For his work, he was given a special recognition award by the Soviet government in 1965. You'd never know from looking at them, but aerosleys were designed to conduct search and rescue missions for Soviet cosmonauts 
after they return to Earth in hard-to-reach locations. While the vehicle might look a little flimsy and unwieldy, it could move or fly across any terrain with a speed of up to 60 miles per hour on snow and 50 miles per hour on the water. She isn't much to look at now, but the SS Palo Alto was once a highly ambitious and unusual ship and has to go down in history as one of the strangest seafaring vessels ever built. She's a product of her era. In 1919, when she was launched, construction materials were still hard to come by in the aftermath of the First World War. If you were paying attention earlier, you can probably guess where we're going with this. Seeking an alternative, the company that made her decided to try using concrete instead of steel. In that way, she might be considered an experimental ship. The experiment was a success, in that the oil tanker could float and move, but nobody wanted to use her for her intended purpose. After 10 years of doing almost nothing, she was converted into a party boat in 1929, offering arcades, dance halls, and a large onboard casino. The good times sadly didn't last. During the 1930s, the Great Depression struck, and nobody had the money to spend on her attractions. Ninety years later, she's little more than a crumbling slab, falling into the waters of California's Monterey Bay piece by piece. It's no longer safe to climb aboard her, and soon all that's left of her will be beneath the waves. Returning to the theme of old Soviet vessels, we should check out the ghost town of Moynak in Uzbekistan. Looking at it now, it's difficult to believe that this was a busy, bustling fishing port as recently as 50 years ago. In fact, it's hard to believe that it was a fishing port at all, because there's no water here. The sight of rusting fishing boats in the middle of the sun-baked desert is a strange one, but it can be attributed to the fact that the Aral Sea is drying up at an astonishing rate. It was once one of the largest lakes in the world, but it's now less than 10% of the size it was in the 1960s. Unless action is taken to reverse the decline, it will have vanished completely by the 2030s. The water's edge is now an astonishing 90 miles away from Moynak, and so with nothing to fish anymore and no industry to sustain them, the city's residents simply packed up as many of their things as they could carry and left town in the early 1970s. They didn't need the boats, so they're all still here. Since the people have gone, oil and gas companies have started drilling into the former lake bed in search of fossil fuels they can extract and have had some luck, so Moynak might be reinvented as a mining town at some point in the future. Garter BA-64 is Iceland's oldest steel ship. That's the sort of fact that ought to earn the vessel a place in a ship museum, but sadly it hasn't been afforded that kind of respect. It's been stuck on a beach for a very long time, and it's slowly falling to pieces. This vessel was launched in 1912, the same year the Titanic sank. Back then, it was called the Globe 4, and was considered to be a state-of-the-art whaling ship. It had a reinforced hull for breaking through sea ice and a steam engine to keep it moving when the wind dropped. The ship survived both world wars and even survived the restrictions that were eventually placed on the whaling industry. She was repurposed as a fishing vessel for catching herring in 1963, which is also when she acquired her current name. She was 51 years old by then, but managed to keep sailing until 1981, when she was finally declared unfit for service and deliberately run aground in Skapadalur Valley. She's still there today, and with a little money and restoration work, looks like she could still sail. Technically speaking, the SS United States isn't abandoned, it's moored and docked. Given that it's been moored and docked in the same place in Philadelphia since 1996, though, it's fair to say that it's at least in a state of semi-abandonment, and plans to rescue and revive the vessel appear to be no more advanced now than they were 20 years ago. This is a shabby way to treat such a historically important ocean liner. She was one of the largest liners ever to be built in the United States, with a length of almost 1,000 feet, and was once the fastest vessel ever to cross the Atlantic Ocean. Between her launch in 1952 and 1969, she was a transatlantic passenger vessel, 
but she's changed hands several times since then. Every owner she's had since the 1970s has failed to make money with her. And by the mid-1990s, the costs associated with stripping asbestos panels out of her interior led to her being towed to Philadelphia and left in situ. She's been at risk of scrapping many times since then, and she's only been saved from that fate by donations from the public. The latest plan is to turn her into a hospitality and cultural space, but based on the failure of all the previous rescue plans, we won't hold our breath. On October 6, 1941, the British munition ship SS Thistlegorm was attacked by German bombers and sank in the Red Sea. The badly damaged vessel was set on fire by the attack and went down when the fire spread to the ammunition store and caused an explosion. Torn in two, it took the Thistlegorm less than a minute to sink, taking all of its cargo down with it. In 2018, German photographer Tobias Friedrich dived down to the wreck and took this picture, which won him the Underwater Photographer of the Year Award for 2018. The photo was taken from inside the ship's cargo hold, where we can see a stockpile of Norton 16H motorbikes. Despite the violence of the explosion that sank the vessel, the dozens of motorbikes in the hold are still lined up in perfect formation next to the cars that went down to the bottom of the ocean with them. All of these vehicles, along with uniforms, rifles, steam locomotives, and aircraft parts, were on their way to Alexandria in Egypt when the Thistlegorm sank. It was a hugely expensive loss for the Allies. The wreck of the USS Sachem is sometimes called the Cincinnati Ghost Ship, which is a little inaccurate because she's stuck in a creek just over the border in Kentucky. It's hard to get a sense of her former beauty by looking at the state she's in today, but she was considered a luxury yacht when she was launched in 1902. Back then, she was known simply as the Celt. It was when she was called up to serve in the First World War that she got the USS Sachem name. After the war, she spent time as a fishing boat and then re-entered military service in 1941 as a training vessel. With that re-enlistment came another new name, the USS Finnekite. Even more new names were to come. She spent the 1950s as a party boat called Captain Martin and then became a tourist vessel in New York City named Sightseer. By then, she'd lost almost every trace of her former glamour and soon became known simply as Circle Line 5. Even with her looks fading, she found fame by appearing in the iconic music video for Papa Don't Preach by Madonna. How she became abandoned after that is unknown, but she's been stuck in this creek for a very long time. The MV Kalakala had a varied and exciting life. She was the luxury fairy of the future when she launched in 1935, charming and delighting passengers who had never seen a ship of this standard before. She was still a tourist attraction 30 years later when she was moored in Seattle, with only the city Space Needle being better known as a landmark in the area. Louis Proctor of the Boeing Company, better known for making planes, was responsible for the ship's unusual Art Deco design, with a flying bridge section designed to resemble wings. At her peak, she hosted a full live orchestra and dance hall within her 276-foot frame. Unfortunately, her unique design caused issues that compromised her integrity, such as poorly aligned engines causing shaking damage during operations. Her condition degraded over time, and eventually, she was beached in Kodiak in 1970 to become a shrimp processing unit. What remained of her was finally disposed of in 2015. If you go to Canada, you'll find a ship named Friendship 500 floating around in a derelict state on Burrard Inlet, Maple Ridge, British Columbia. Nobody knows it is Friendship 500, though. To those local to the region, it is and always has been called the McBarge. The vessel is a floating restaurant that McDonald's built for little reason other than to show off to visitors to the Expo 1986 World Fair in the city. It's thought that it cost the fast food company $8 million to build it, and yet they couldn't find a single use for it after the World Fair ended. It's been abandoned in C2 ever since. 
it presumably once looked cutting edge and futuristic, but now it looks rusty, lumpy, and downright ugly. In 2016, there were rumors that the unwanted barge would be renovated and used as part of a new waterfront development in the area. But four years have passed since then, and there's no sign of any repair or maintenance work happening at the site. It might be called the Friendship, but nobody has shown this poor vessel any friendly behavior in a very long time. Subscribe to the channel, turn on the notification bell, and enjoy watching new videos on my channel. Thanks for watching, and see you soon!